Okay, so you're at the point where you need to start an IV. If you aren't comfortable yet starting IVs, the most important thing to do is not to panic. If you go into starting an IV with a confident attitude, this process will go a lot smoother. You want to have all of your supplies ready before jumping in. The supplies that you will need include gloves, a beveled needle with catheter, an IV start kit, which typically includes a tegaderm, gauze, a skin prep cleaning agent, tape, and a tourniquet. We have all those things laid out on our table. You may also need a 10 milliliter saline flush, which you'll see in a little bit, and is used to determine whether you're in the correct location in determining your vein patency. You may want to also tear your tape into strips and attach them to the side of the table so you'll be completely prepared to tape your IV in place. To begin, you'll want to find a suitable vein. There are numerous veins that can be poked, but the most common veins are located on the upper extremity, mainly the anacubital fossa and the dorsum of the hand. Now there are a lot of tricks out there that seasoned IV veterans use to make veins bulge out, but a few of the more common ones are to ask the patient to clench and unclench their hand into a fist. Do this for approximately 10 seconds. Another trick you could use is to have the patient's hand and arm down by their side so that gravity pulls the blood down into the extremity. Notice he's also clenching and unclenching his fist, doing both tricks at once. Some people prefer to tap a vein, which may reveal a good vein and get them to stick up. Don't spend too long looking for a good sight since patients expect you to know what you are doing even when you may not be a pro. Now let's begin with an IV start. To begin, you'll need to apply a tourniquet. There's no magic location on where to place the tourniquet, but as a rule of thumb, you want to apply it in half an extremity proximal to the puncture location. So it's half up the extremity proximal to the dorsum of the hand, which is where our IV start will take place. If you were to start an IV on the anacubital fossa, which you can see in another one of our videos, you'll want to tie for tourniquet at the middle of the humerus. Now there are many modifications to the tourniquet tie, but you want to make sure you tie it so that it can be released with one hand. We just demonstrated one version of the tie, so that if you, if you pull on either one of these ends here, that tourniquet will come loose. You'll want to tie the tourniquet tight enough to impede any venous blood flow, but not too tight as to amputate their arm. Nice, so now step one is complete. You'll want to clean the skin over where you will introduce the needle. This is to prevent any infection once you break the skin surface. Once you have found your vein, you'll most likely want to anchor it. Now that the vein is clean, we'll anchor it. Veins are mobile and tend to roll around, so anchoring a vein will help you when inserting the needle. To do this, as you just saw, we will grab with our non-dominant hand a few inches distal to the vein. With our thumb, we will apply some skin traction distal to the site, meaning you are dragging the skin away from the site of puncture. This reduces the number of whirled veins and will make you look like a seasoned IV start veteran. Now it's time to grab your needle and a catheter. These come together in your kit. The important thing to remember here is to keep the bevel up. What does that mean? Well, here's a little graphic. You can see that the bevel, referring to this diagonal portion of the needle, is facing up, away from the skin. You want to maintain that all the way through your puncture. With your dominant hand, you want to keep the pointed side down closer to the skin with the rounded side or bevel facing up to the ceiling. This will allow the needle to pass easily through the skin and into a vein. The next trick is to figure out an angle. You don't want to stick the needle in the arm at a 45 degree angle because we are not digging for gold, we are digging for a vein. This could be very dangerous to the tissues underneath the vein if you have it at a too extreme of an angle. Veins are pretty superficial so it won't take long before you encounter one. I typically hold the, the, excuse me, the needle at a 15 to 20 degree angle as you can see here. Make sure you insert the needle in a nice and controlled fashion. Once you hit a vein, there will be a little flash chamber that will fill red. As you can see there, red is filling the flash chamber. This tells you that you have indeed pierced a vein. If you're in the correct location, your next step is to advance the catheter off of the needle with your opposite hand. Remember not to move the needle, you are advancing just the catheter. I 
Ideally, you'd be able to move the catheter all the way up to the skin surface like so. Sometimes this is more difficult than others. We are simply sliding the tubing off the needle there, and after you advance the catheter all the way up to the skin, you can remove the needle. Some needles, like the one here, are spring-loaded, so they will retract with a simple button push. After we do this, we will need to stop the blood and stop the bleed. As you can see here, blood has started to come out of our catheter. You can notice that our practitioner has applied uh, pressure proximal to where the catheter is, enters the skin, thus impeding flow out through the catheter. Next, the practitioner will remove the tourniquet with the one-handed technique, like so. And now the practitioner will check the patency of the vein using 10 milliliters of saline in what's called a saline flush. They will screw the saline flush onto the catheter and then inject it. If the vein is indeed patent, it should slide easily out of the syringe and into the vein. This should not cause the patient any discomfort and you are merely hydrating them. After the 10 mils are inside the patient, you have ensured that the vein is patent and you now can attach your IV or a cap, whatever, uh, whatever apparatus you want to. In this case, we're just simply going to remove our entire catheter and syringe in one fell swoop. And we will show you how to successfully remove a catheter. To do this, you'll need a 2 by 2 inch gauze pad, and you'll place it just proximal to where the catheter enters the skin. Applying pressure, you'll remove the catheter and syringe in one swoop, like so, applying pressure on the puncture site. You can now apply a bandage or tape this 2 by 2 in place. And that is how you start an IV catheter in the dorsum of the hand.